but they're not really happy in their marriages, but they just coexist with each other because maybe they've had multiple marriages. Like friends. What do you, what do you, what do you they mean? They coexist like friends. Yeah, 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 yeah. Right. Or roommates. Or roommates. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And yeah. so I don't want to have a marriage like that. You know, I don't either. I don't I don't want to just be married. You know, some marriages are, they cope well with bill paying and things like that, but they sleep in separate rooms. Or, you know, and I, and, I, and, I, and I understand some people sleep in separate rooms for different reasons, but I'm speaking of the ones that are just... I don't really like you mm-hmm. and I stay in another room, you know, but we do good together as far as our children and stuff like that. Mm-hmm. I don't want that kind of relationship with you. I mm-hmm. wanna not me either. I wanna be able to 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 increase, to, to get better every day, to get better every hour. Don't you? Yeah, like, I do. I really do. Know, it's, I don't wanna be stuck in just we got married mm-hmm. and now now what? Right. Because I think that now what causes your eye to wonder and look elsewhere. Yeah. You know what I mean? I do. I do. So I just don't want to survive. I want to... Thrive. Do you want to thrive in your marriage? Is that something that's on your radar? If so, don't you turn that dial. We'll be right back. Let's thrive. Institution. It was created by God. Where by how many? Two. Two rational, free moral agents, male and female. They both choose to enter into a covenant relationship with whom? An Almighty God. Ah, you thought it was with each other. <laughs> now they knew. With an Almighty God to stay with an imperfect person. Pastor. Yes, Pastor. We are in relationship. We are in covenant together. Yes. Don't you want to thrive in that relationship versus just survive? I do. Hallelujah. Let's give them a little information, our ILM couples and family, on the differences between survive and thriving. Yeah, yeah. All right. So when we look at thrive, survive versus thrive, here's what we learn. To survive means to continue to live or exist in spite of danger. Mm. Whereas to thrive means to grow, develop, and prosper. Most of us have times in life when we have to pass through a period of survival in order Order to to thrive. thrive. But I want to encourage all of us who are listening, whether you're new to this broadcast or whether you exist with us on a regular basis, that it is so important that we move from out of a period of survival mm. and that we would learn to thrive. Amen. Anybody could just exist, right? right. But we want to move beyond just existing and we really want to thrive. So this evening for what amount of time that we have, we're going to talk a little bit about that. Like any other relationships that matters, marriage is challenging. Do you agree with that, Pastor Kofi? 100%. <laughs> One hundred percent. If there was a percentage higher than a hundred, I'd go for it. <laughs> so some some may it's say serious. that marriage is hard. Yes. Yes. Others might. Oh, go ahead. No, go ahead. Some may say something different. Some may say that marriage is challenging. But couples who are committed mm. to their marriage and who want their marriage to do more than just survive, they really desire to have a marriage that will thrive. Mm. So if you feel Amen. anything different. Then perhaps 
you are in a rut. Mm. Or maybe fed, fed up in your marriage. One of the things that I believe that, yes, it's two people in a marriage. But it takes two people to work within the marriage mm. to make that marriage thrive or to cause it to thrive, right? Mm. So we want to share with you this evening, we want to be able to encourage you and also to inspire you mm -hmm. by the word of God to consider some things that we're going to share with you. So I'm going to ask that you would go with us to the Old Testament, the first book of the Bible, which is Genesis chapter 2, and I'm going to read for us verse 24. Amen. Genesis chapter 2, verse 24, and it reads in this manner, Therefore a man shall leave his father and mother mm -hmm. and be joined to his wife. Hmm. And they shall become one flesh. One flesh. My God. So, when we look at thriving marriages, it requires dedication. It requires commitment. It requires cooperation. Mm -hmm. And it also, Pastor Kofi, it, it requires an effort to continue nourishing the marital ties between a husband and a wife. Absolutely, absolutely. You have to nourish what's there. Yeah, yeah. It doesn't nourish itself. No, it doesn't. It does not. Amen, Pastor. Yes, I huh? did want to make a point. Pastor, you know, I hear, I hear our family, I hear them in the spirit sometimes when we're preaching and ministering. Mm -hmm. And I'm hearing right now yeah, Pastor, I understand it takes two. It takes two. But what do you do Come on. when it's just one putting forth the effort in the relationship? What do you do when you want what your spouse doesn't want? You're willing to put the work in, but your spouse is not putting the work in. You, you feel that you hear the great messages that you preach, and you're inspired when you hear them. So we get off from looking at you all on here and we say, we're going to do it. Mm -hmm. But then when I get off, sometimes I'm looking and my husband's not looking at it. Sometimes I'm watching your program and my wife is not looking at it. Mm -hmm. So when I get off the program and I'm excited and I want to come live it, I go off and I do the things you said do, but he or she doesn't do them. Mm -hmm. He or she didn't even hear them to do them. They weren't interested at the time to mm -hmm. listen, to sit back. And so now I feel like I'm all in it all by myself. Right. So I, I, were you, were you going to say something else with it? No, I just felt that and I wanted to bring that out because we have answers for that. Yeah. I, I really believe that with what you just said, that if we would take hold to the word of God and let it really be deeply rooted inside of us, uh -huh. that everything that we do, if we would remember to do it unto the Lord uh -huh. and not look for instant gratification or for immediate change or response from that husband or from that wife that we may be encouraged that first I'm doing it unto the Lord mm. and just continue to put my faith and trust in God mm. and, in, and in his word and see sometimes I think in marriages we focus a lot on the just the surviving part like okay I've been in this thing 20 years like where I'm going to go ain't no need to try to start over right. with nobody else but if we would just really remember what the word says, mm -hmm. you know, everything that we do, we should do it unto him. And if we would focus on what we desire the marriage to be, watch this, according to the word of God. Yes, Pastor. That if we would take hold to that and not keep seeing the inconsistencies in our spouse and their shortcomings and wow, not powerful. being critical and not doing a comparison, I believe that we'll begin to see a change in them because sometimes we're putting stock in our mate and we're not applying the word to it. We wow. know it, but we're not always applying it or we're applying it, but we're not trusting God through the process. It's just something that we're doing because we're trying to survive. Exactly. That's survival mode. And, you know, also to look at it this way, marriage is a divine institution created by God, right? Whereby mm -hmm. two rational 
female allegiance choose to enter into a covenant relationship with whom? With Almighty God. With Almighty God. So literally, when you just said, do it as unto the Lord, yeah. whatever you do, do it as unto the Lord, that is lining up with the commitment to God yes. to stay with this imperfect person. Yeah. Meaning, I'm making a covenant with an Almighty God mm -hmm. about this person. Yes. So when I'm ready to change and they are not ready to change, Go to God yes. about that because he's the one that you made the covenant to. Yes. Or at least in this dispensation of time, you've understood that if you just got married to your spouse only, you were incorrect. That marriage was a divine institution created by God. So you had to make a commitment to God about your spouse. Yeah. And now that you've done that, Right now that you've set aside time in your head to lock that in, that my relationship with God is first yes. and foremost. OK, first and foremost, my relationship with God is there. So now when I'm ready to change, I can't be concerned only with and it's natural to be concerned about what your spouse is doing. Oh, not yeah. doing. I'm yeah, not going to tell you it's not natural. What I'm saying is that it's not effective. Right. My God. It's not effective <coughs> to zero in on your spouse's actions, what they're doing and they're not doing, mm -hmm. how they're not doing it. Instead, allow God to centralize your thoughts around you. Say this with me. It pertains, it pertains to me. To me. Now do this with me. Pointing at yourself. It pertains, it pertains to me. To me. Not them. Not them. Me. Me. Hallelujah. See, when you take that attitude about it, God can reach you concerning your marriage. Yeah. And you might say, well, pastor, like I said, you said some good stuff for us to do, but it's for us to do, right. pastor. Right. And right. right now, I feel like I'm the only one doing what you've presented. We say to you, child of God, oh, come keep on. on doing it. Because you're doing it as unto the Lord. Yes, hallelujah. He's the first layer of your marriage. Yeah. You follow me? He's the one you're really covenant with or in covenant with. Amen? Amen. And all you got to do is keep rubbing up against him the right way. And let me tell you what your almighty God can do come for on. you. Your almighty God can come down and break through your spouse's yeah. flesh without hurting them. Enter Hallelujah. into their heart yes, and cause a change on the inside of them, irregardless as to what they've decided not to do as it relates to you. Yeah. The fact that God can reach me when she prays for me, when she prays concerning me. Now, if she tries to come tell me what she's praying about, guess what might happen? You got it. We might clash. <laughs> we might argue. Why? Because she's going to say it in a way that rubs my flesh the wrong way. Mm -hmm. If I want to say something to her in regards to her actions, and I may not think that she's very good on criticisms, right? So if I criticize her, what's she going to do? Defend herself. Instead, what if we were to take our grievances to the Lord yeah, yeah. about our That's spots good. and trust that the Lord, Yes, I'm getting in your business here. That the Lord will actually change your spouse, not you. Yes. See, I don't have a permit to change Shelly. Thought I did. <laughs> I thought I did. But I don't have a permit to change her, nor does she have one to do what? Change you. Change me. But instead, what has permitted to happen is you and I have said, God, I commit to you. Yeah, yeah. And because yes. I commit to you, now you can stand yes. firm in my relationship and you can change my spouse. Yes. You can get my spouse to see what I'm trying to say on this particular subject that we keep rubbing up against each yes. other negatively on, yes. right? Yes. And so right. put God at the center of your marriage. Not only that, when you feel that you're the only one doing the effort, mm. check this out. You're not. The spouse may not be saying they're doing the same thing as you, but if they have a relationship with God, trust me, God is talking to your spouse. Yes. God is Thank leading you, your spouse. God is in your spouse. Thank you. Lord. Oh, don't sit there and look at me in that tone of voice. You wouldn't have married them, would you? 
if you saw no God in them, mm -hmm. I know that actions here and there look like there's no God in them and I got you. But we're not thinking like that, are we? Mm -hmm. Because we're trying to do what? Thrive. That's right. Not survive. Survival would be just to accept the fact that they're that way. Yeah. No. Thriving is, Lord, what can I do yes. in this relationship to make it better? Yes. Amen? Yes. Amen. Well, I thought you wanted to um, get that answer for that person that was thinking that. Amen? Mm -hmm. I hope Amen. that that answers something for you. Amen? Yeah. Amen. Amen. Pastor, we got a few more minutes to go. I apologize. I took up a little oh, no, time no, here. Fine. But let's go ahead and give them the next point and then the juicy point for next week. Okay. Give them the next point. You know what? the juicy point. I think we're just going to give them another juicy point and leave them hanging. Uh, don't leave them hanging. Okay, so <laughs> meet us back here if it be the Lord's will because we're going to meet back with you if it be the Lord's will on next Monday. And we're going to touch on don't compare. So think mm. about that. Yeah, I know we had it last week, but we're going to go We're gonna go just a little bit. A little bit Deeper. Deeper. With the comparison. A little bit deeper. A little bit deeper. See, uh, remember, the goal of this message is to cause us not to want to just survive. Survive, that's right. But to cause something to igniting us. Yeah. That makes us want to thrive. thrive. Hey, if you are wanting to thrive in your relationship, hold on. I believe God has a few answers for you. Inspired Life Ministries is on your side. Yeah, that is on the side of your family. Yes. The family starts with a husband and a wife coming together before the children. It was Adam and Eve before Seth, before Cain, Cain before Abel. Yeah. You follow what I'm saying? He had to 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 submit and he she had to submit to a relationship between the two of them. Mm -hmm. So we are here, Inspired Life, to encourage your marriage to thrive. Amen? Amen. To do better than it ever has before. Yes. You might have a poor marriage. I want it to do better. You might have a great marriage. We want it to do better. Yes. No matter what you're looking at right now, we're looking at thriving. Hallelujah, Hallelujah goes right there. So thrive with us this evening by making this commitment to God. Say, God, God I, I, it pertains to me. It pertains to me. Say your name, Let's Kofi. You. Decide, Decide this evening, this evening that, it pertains to me, that it pertains to me that I will come to you that I will come to you for what bothers me for what bothers me about my spouse. About my spouse. I won't try to change I them. I won't try to change instead, them. Instead, instead I'll enhance them. I will enhance them by coming to you. By coming to you about them. About them. Letting you letting you do the work. Do the work. On them. On him. Not me. Not me. Oh yeah. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Come into my marriage. Come into my marriage. And into my heart. And into my heart. Amen. 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 Well, if you said that prayer, you definitely have started your journey yeah. towards thriving. See, thriving is the name of the game, not surviving the game. Mm. Thriving mean. inside of the game. I hope you accept the value that we gave you, and we gave it to you because ILM loves you but, but more importantly, importantly god loves you, you know he does peace we'll see you soon blessings god bless you